So one of my favorite moments of the school year is the very beginning of a break. Anyone with me? Perhaps you remember this moment from when you were in school, or perhaps you know this moment from your children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews or whatever young people you have in your life. It is the moment when it sinks in that it is finally school break. It means for the duration of the break that there are no early wake ups, that there is no homework to be done and there is no hurrying everybody out the door to make sure we catch the bus on time. This is a very, very joyous moment, not just for the students, but for the teachers and the school administrators and the staff and yes, the parents as well. And especially this year, when for the past several months, we feel like we have been on a very, very long journey. But today, it is finally time to relax and celebrate. In this moment, there is joy, pure, unadulterated joy. This joy is literally bouncing off the walls at school or at home when the students arrive at home. It feels like in this moment that we have metaphorically crossed the Red Sea. Yes, there are many more months and years ahead of us. Many more times we will go back to our early wake ups and lunches and homework to be done. But today, tonight, in this moment, there is just joy and celebration. So let us continue this joy and express our celebration through the Mihamocha.
across the Red Sea, we enter the desert. Perhaps even before they crossed the Red Sea, they looked across and saw nothingness. They saw the journey that lay before them, not any destination at all, the harsh, unforgiving desert. And so we prayed in the only way that they knew how they prayed. There is a power, a life force, which does, in fact, breathe through every living being, stretching out as the galaxies expand, also threading itself through the winnowing of every molecule that's blinking in and out of existence, each one a miracle. What we call it, that flow, it doesn't matter, but just know that others have also felt it, not always and not everywhere, but there in moments of pain, in moments of joy and gratitude, love, presence. And when we ask to feel that presence spread over us like, like a talit, over our heads, like a sukkah shutting out the cold, like a blanket wrapping us tight, tight. We are simply hoping that the last time that we felt it, that we felt connected and warm, that we felt full of life and in tune with the world, with our family, with our friends, with our synagogue, that it wasn't the last time and we hope that that feeling might come again. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Let Standing among us, let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. thought has blown the marketplace away. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, he knew that Shabbat was something more than one service or one melody, one tradition. He understood that when we pray, we are actually looking for something and not finding it. We get just a faint scent of it. But that faint scent encourages us to keep looking, keep searching. Heschel felt each building block of prayer, the Baruchu and the Elenu, each of them steps lifting us higher as if we were building something each and every time that we pray them. He knew that we needed each other to get that foundation laid and the bricks stacked one on top of the other, and that every week, Friday afternoon, we needed again to roll up our sleeves and build, 
We started with the foundation and we build bricks on bricks. Shabbat is just an idea. It's a thought, the day of rest. It's a time when we have value just because we are made in the image of God, every one of us. And Heschel reminds us that this idea, this thought, although you cannot see the structure it builds or feel the bricks with your hands, that that thought is strong enough to weather the storms of generations, to wipe away everyday concerns, the marketplace, in an instant, if we let it, if we build Shabbat tonight, if we make Shabbat a taste of eternity, the smallest taste, the faintest scent, it is only a day, a single day. It is spoken into being like God creating the word, the world. It is eternity uttering a day for us. God has drawn the marketplace away. There is a song on the wind. Joy in the trees. Shabbat has arrived in the world. Scattering a song the silence of the night and eternity utters a day eternity utters a a song on the joy in the trees. Joy in the trees. Shabbat arrives in the world. Arrives in the world. Scattering its song. Scattering in the silence of the night. In the silence of the eternity utters a day. Eternity utters a day. Open our lips that our mouths may declare your praise. Pause for just a moment with silent reflection and prayer.
our thoughts swirl around us, our prayers, they ascend over the roofs of our homes and they find one another. Their pathways to the skies, they swirl together and they ascend even higher to the foot of the throne of the Almighty. That's the image that the ancients gave us in their understanding of what prayer was and how it worked. I think what was so powerful to them about that image was the idea that our prayers are not unique and they are not individual, but they are part of something greater. That when we pray, that our prayers do affect one another, that we can pray for each other, that we can hear the prayers around us, even in a Zoom conference call that hopefully those prayers will combine themselves together and strengthen because of our numbers together. That's what's so special about joining together for Shabbat each week. It also helps us understand the power of Misha Beirach, the prayer that we offer each week for those who are struggling in life with illness, struggling with sadness and depression, struggling with the isolation that we are all living with now, struggling with school online, struggling with work online, struggling to not know where the boundaries lie between our professional lives and our personal lives. When we work from home and all we have to do is walk downstairs to be in our office, it becomes challenging to know Where can I find health? Where can I find a way to balance my life? So Misha Berach might be a prayer that we offer those who are struggling with COVID. It might be the prayer that we offer those who are recovering from illness or surgeries or procedures. It might be the prayer that we offer one another to say, I see you, I hear you, and I offer you what strength I have to help get us through this difficult time apart. If you'll take a moment, you are welcome to to add the names of your loved ones or yourselves or others who you know that we should keep in, in our minds to offer them our strength and our prayers in this moment of healing. Our congregation is specifically thinking about and praying for Adam Shepard, Larry Dorfman, Nancy Bonham, and Cantor Janice Roger as she recovers from a procedure just today. We also pause to remember the struggles that are facing right now, those who we have listed in the chat, Naomi Kaufman, Javi Lev Goldstein, Anna Beth Spaulding, Donald Parker, Wendy Barish and Tracy Zaitlow, Ann Castillo, Harvey Katz, Andy Weidekamp, Julie Unwin, Levi Chisholm, Levi Chisholm, Megan McLaughlin, Addie and family, Steve Harrington, Nancy Schmidt, Trisha Casper, Elaine Fryrick and Dave Kress, Jim Cordero, Dudley Kaysen, Dottie Powell, Mike and Zach Berman, Jill Ross, Mel- Melanie Heck, Norma Roth and Steve Roth, Rich Corvassi, Lainey Shipper, Brian Davis and Shelley Iltis, Jane Bashir, Joanna Sloan, Martin Lee Gosselin, Rabbi Inna, Sid Rosenblatt, Jacob Edelhart, Ken Kraus. I think of all of them and those who are struggling in silence as well, we offer them this prayer for healing.
sow in tears will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow. Thank you, Rabbi Brett, for bringing so much attention um, and intention to really talking about all of the ways that people are suffering and struggling right now. That's really lovely that you can highlight that um, for all of us. And so fitting with the song that uh, hoping that we will land in a place of joy, because that is where we're going uh, with my sermon tonight. So I have a question for all of you. Have you ever made a New Year's resolution? If so, did you stick to it? I invite you now to put in the chat any New Year's resolution that you have made or if you have heard about somebody making. While you are doing that, I wanna share with you a recent conversation that I had with a friend of mine. We were talking about New Year's resolutions and she said that she doesn't normally make them, but she happened to have made them for 2020. My friend's first New Year's resolution for 2020 was to spend more time at home with her family. <laughs> that is definitely a resolution that my friend made for sure in 2020, no question. Her second resolution was to cook and to bake more. Once again, a thank you to COVID, she 100% met that resolution as well. Her last goal, her last resolution for 2020 was to spend more time outdoors, especially with her family. And yet again, that was definitely a goal that she achieved. So this is a time of year when we often think about resolutions and reflect on our lives and think about the fact that ask, ask ourselves, are there things that we wanna change? Are there things that we could be doing better? But I do know that this year, 2020, has been especially challenging for many people. It has been a year when we have had to dig very deep to find some sparks of joy. So as I was thinking about this, a line from a Haftarah came to mind. This is a Haftarah that we read on Rosh Hashanah. It is from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55. He writes that you shall go out in joy and you shall be led forth in peace. Here, Isaiah is hoping that the Israelites will be able to go forth with Rena with abundant and unadulterated joy. So recently, people have had to find a lot of different and creative ways to try to find joy in their lives, especially like my friend, as we are all spending much, much more time at home. For some people, they have found this joy and watching a series on Netflix called Tidying Up. This show features a woman called Marie Kondo who approaches decluttering her home in a very specific way. Instead of just haphazardly throwing out items, she uses a very intentional process of saving and discarding things. Kondo suggests that we should examine all of the things in our home. And if they spark joy for us, then we should keep them. But if they do not, then it is time to thank them for their service and to let them go. And I doubt that Kanda would think about it in these ter terms, but I believe that there are some profound lessons in her methods about how we should reflect on our lives. I think beyond disregarding clothes, we can use this to reflect on our behaviors. I think, so to speak, we can Marie Kondo our lives. We can use her approach to think about how we wanna spend our time in 2021. 
Again, the words of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55 read, you shall go out in joy, you shall be led forth in peace. Here the prophet is reminding us that to live our lives in ways that will spark joy for us. He is instructing us that it is not enough just to try to walk in God's ways, but we are supposed to do so in ways that create joy for us and for those around us. We should find joy in these things. And when we do so, that will help us find inner peace. And I do know that 2020 has been a difficult year for many of us. And there were definitely times when we did not feel joy. And there are also other times and other reasons when we are not in a place to focus on joy. But when we are in a place, and it is a time when we can focus on joy, it is an ideal that we spend some time thinking about, asking ourselves these questions, what really does make us happy? Especially in 2021, so many of the things that normally spark happiness for us have been cut off. But I wanna ask you a question. Over the past few months, have you find, found anything new that you like to do that has brought you joy? Have you found any unexpected blessings in these things? And perhaps some of these things that you've started during the pandemic, you wanna keep up after the pandemic is over. Are there some changes that you want to make in the, in the months ahead to spark even more joy in your life? Exactly what brings us joy is different for each of us. Designer and writer Ingrid Fattel Lee defines joy as moments that make us want to jump up and down with happiness. When surveying people about what brings them joy, she discovered it is often simple childlike things that bring happiness even to adults. She noticed that the more people she talked to, the more patterns that she saw, regardless of the age or gender or ethnicity or race of the people giving her answers. She found things like cherry blossoms and swimming pools and hot air balloons and bubbles and especially ice cream cones with sprinkles brought people joy. According to her research, Lee found that joy can be experienced as individuals, but it can also be experienced as group. There is a collective happiness that comes from seeing a rainbow or watching a fireworks display. These moments of joy also bring hope and a sense of peace to the people watching it. She advocates that if we intentionally surround ourselves with things that bring us delight, then it can foster more joy all around. In a previous sermon, I shared with you how much Shabbat was central to my childhood. Thank you, mom and dad, we're on. Each week and every week at the Shabbat table, we would share our favorite thing that happened during the week. While we did not exactly use these terms, we were really talking about the things that brought us joy. So each week, whether it was a wonderful week or a hard one, we always first search for something to share at the Shabbat table. This practice taught me the importance of searching for those small things that bring us joy, even when, and especially when, our weeks were challenging. I try to do this now with my own children because I want to teach them the same lessons that my parents taught me about seeking joy each week. I think we can take this Shabbat practice and apply it to how we think about 2021. We can look for the little things that bring us happiness and that will help us see the blessings that are all around us. So even in these difficult times, we can still appreciate the good things that are in our lives. Judaism is a religion that celebrates good. So many of our prayers and our texts and our ceremonies are designed to acknowledge and celebrate joy. In the Psalms class that I just taught, we studied Psalms 150. This is the last of the Psalms, and it is all about ways to express our thanks and our praise to God. It encourages us to find joy, not only in the words we say, but in the way that we say thanks to God. This particular psalm includes all sorts of different instruments as a means for communicating with God. There are things like drums and cymbals and lutes. This psalm is often set to music in beautiful, expressive, and joyful ways. To me, this psalm isn't just about saying thanks in words, but it is also about finding joy in whatever way works for us. For some of us, it is through music. 
For others, it is through movement. For some, it is in community. For some, it is spending time outdoors. For others, it is cooking or knitting or even wearing funny wigs. For each of us, it will be different. But I believe that our tradition and our text is encouraging us to find our joy and to spend our time in ways that enhances it in our lives. So perhaps our text is encouraging us that our New Year's resolution for 2021 should be to focus on the things that spark joy in our lives. Even with the limitations of the pandemic, we can still Marie Kondo our lives, maximizing our happiness. We can create our own versions of Psalm 150, fostering joy all around us each and every day. So I pray that in the months ahead, our days will be filled with joy. I pray that we will be able to appreciate the blessings in our lives and spread joy to one another. May this be so in 2021. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It's become our custom to, we got this from Goldman Union Camp, actually, and we can't, we can't show our appreciation in, in more direct ways. So we, we, sh we share a little warmth with you, Rabbi Jordana. Thank you. This is our way of expressing joy in this moment, since the, uh, the silly wigs are going to have to wait until Purim, I think. Uh, we're so pleased to welcome a uh, member of our board of directors, Andrea Burnett, to share a word of Shabbat. Welcome. Shabbat Shalom, Andrea. Hi, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. It's so nice to see everyone tonight. Um, my name is Andrea Burnett, and I serve on your IHC board. Um, Nefesh service is one of my favorite services. Um, thank you, Rabbi Jordana, for the wonderful, uplifting message. Um, thank you, Rabbi Brad and Rabbi Shapiro and Dr. Christopher and staff for such a lovely service. Um, please check our website and Facebook pages for updated programs and services. Oh, I almost forgot, Alex, um, muzzle tough to you, and um, you will do a great job tomorrow. Uh, I'm especially looking forward tomorrow morning for the IHC Taurus study at 9 a.m. with Rabbi Jordana, an informative, lively hour continuing our study of Genesis. Details and Zoom link are available on our IHC website. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you so much. Shabbat Shalom to you and your family. Um, and it is just so wonderful to see all of your uh, all of your faces on Zoom and the Shabbat service. And especially Mazel Tov to you, Alex, once again. I'm really looking forward to celebrating with you and all of your friends and family tomorrow morning. Uh, that will be at 1030. So you can join us for tech study at nine and then just stick around and join us for this wonderful celebration at 1030. Uh, we are missing being in the building, but we are making the best of that. So Shabbat Shalom and congratulations to you, Alex, and your family. We pause as is our custom at the end of our Shabbat Zoom experience to remember those in our community who are here uh, for, for their moment of mourning who are remembering a loss from many years ago or perhaps are suffering from a more recent loss. On this Shabbat, we are especially remembering Robert Bob Hurwitz, uh, whose, uh, whose family is in the period of Shiva this week, and Celia Katz, the uh, mother of Mitch Katz, who passed away a few days ago and uh, whose funeral will be in the coming week. We also remember those who are in the period of Shloshim, having lost a loved one in the past 30 days. We remember Emil Dansker, Barry Stephen Harsip, Gloria Firestone, Valentina Greenberg, and John Porter, friends and family of members of our congregation. And we also remember Judy Yoakum, who uh, also died in recent days and whose funeral will be will be uh, in the coming days. While we, of course, look to our yard site list, those members of our congregation who died at this season in years past, we also invite you to please use the chat once again to uh, mention loved ones who you are remembering so that we might mention them with our own.
Our congregation on this week is remembering Edda Basson, Marcella Bell, Francis Biller, Herman Bratnick, Peter Kahn, Sam Cohen, mm -hmm. Edward Cohn, David Cook, Paula Davidson, Sarah Epstein, Maverett Flummerfelt, Ruth Frankel, Jerome Friedman, Abraham Friedman, Sidney Goldberg, Margaret Goldman, Bell Grant, Bernard Grosswald, Erno Hertz, Beatrice Heiser, Edith Jenkins, Selma Khan, Brad Katz, Bernard Kleiman, Yosef Komarovsky, Rosamund Kolbeck, Jane Lawson, Rose Leopold, Harold Lerman, Samuel Leshnover, Rose Levin, Jacobs, Jacob Lutz, Sadie Menlowitz, Jacques Morris, James Mossler, David Parson, Louis Platt, Samuel Romer, Ethel Rubenstein, Bertha Rubin, David Rudd, Nettie Rudd, Joseph Schoneman, Leonard Schroeder, Lena Shapiro, Bertha Sharp, Terry Shepard, Leonard Siegel, Saul Sosen, Doris Stadler, Irving Stein, Simus Simon Steinberg, Gladys Stone, Theodore Strader, Joseph Wilson. I also remember those who we have listed in the chat. Lori Bell, Judy Yoakum again, Jerry Steele, Elsa and Abram Buka, William Cohen Cowan, Betty Glazier, Brett Henry, Clara Dank, Carl Berg, Amelia Cook Lurvy, Amy Cook Lurvy. Apologies if I've mispronounced any of those names. We join now together in the words of Mourners Kaddish, remembering them all. Vikadal Vikadash Shemei Rabbah. Bi Alma Divra Chirute, Yamlich Malchute, Bachayechon of Yomechon, of Chaye de Holbek Israel, Ba Agala of Isman Kariv Vimru Amen. Yehe Shame Raba Mavarach Le Olam Ulame Amaya, Yit Barach, Vish Dabach, Vit Paar, Vit Ramam, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shme de Kutcha Brihu. Leila min kol birchata v'shirata, tush v'chata v'nechamata, da'amiran v'yalma v'yimru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. Ose shalom in Ramav, hu ya'ase shalom aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. In addition to this prayer for peace for our people, we add, this is our custom, a prayer for peace for all who dwell on earth with the words Vial Kol Yoshve Teveil. And once again say together, Amen. Amen. It's a joy to share this moment of Shabbat with you, to lift one another up, even in our moments of sadness, our great moments of joy and celebration. Shabbat Shalom to you, and I hope that it is a Wonderful end to a Hanukkah full of light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Shabbat Shalom to all of you. Shabbat Shalom. I have my helpers here with me tonight, uh, Julian and Eleanor, and they are going to help us with hamotzi. We have a beautiful challah here um, from Trader Joe's. Someday we will make our own, <laughs> but today thank you to Trader Joe's for helping us. Um, and what a wonderful way to end Hanukkah and this lovely service filled with joy. Hamotzi al rest. We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our prayer is humbly said. Baruch HaTanai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Hamotzi lehemin rest. Uh, amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. We will unmute you now so everyone can say hi to one another. And Shabbat shalom to you all. Let's go ahead and meet you. Bye, Alex. Shabbat shalom. 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 Shalom, Jennifer. Shalom, New York. Dogs that are with us. There's so many different dogs. Hi, Mary. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. She loves the music. Vicky. Shabbat shalom. Say hi. Thank you so much. It's, I, I hope that you all have this wonderful oh, yeah. Shabbat dinner there waiting for you. I don't know, but if you want homemade challah, let's do another class. I think it's time, yes. right? Rabbi Jordan yeah. and I will we'll do another challah uh, uh, <laughs> together. Shabbat shalom to you all. Have a wonderful day. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.